Hey guys, it's Reviews and More, back with another quick tech review on the Rosewill SRM-01 Micro ATX Mini ITX Budget Case. Before I begin with the actual unboxing review, please subscribe to my channel or give a thumbs up or both to the video if you like it and find it helpful. So here we go, brief explanation as to what this case is. This is a budget, no frills, basic case, just based on the image that you see on the opening part of this video right here. It is good for the micro ATX and mini ITX form factor. So this is for making a very small, compact computing system. The case itself is a grand total of seven pounds, all in all, 13, almost 14 inches by 6.69 6 inches by 13.9 inches. So it's about six inches, six a little over six and a half inches wide, thir uh, 14 inches deep, 13.9 inches tall. So fairly um, lightweight all things considered there is no um, a, there's no acrylic on this there's no clear acrylic there's no tempered glass this is a very basic no frill system there's not a whole lot to it as far as looks functionality wise it's pretty good for the price a grand total of 20 bucks on it at Rose Will's eBay page and I imagine Newegg probably has it close to the same price as well um, we'll go over as this video continues the basics of this case uh, first, it will basically it's only for the mini ITX and micro ATX form factors. It is steel with some plastic on the front as well as some plastic on the internal portions. There's a uh, three, uh, USB 3.0 on the side, USB 2.0 on top, power button, uh, mic, and headphone jacks. The basics that you would need for a very basic entry level budget style computer or for a workstation. Uh, as far as what it comes with not a whole lot everything in there is kind of basic i was a little surprised about the thumb screws considering it's a 20 dollars case and they put and they that's a little added expense i guess on their part i love it when they have thumb screws the most annoying thing in the world is getting a case especially when you spend a lot of money on a case which seems to be the strange thing and getting crappy thumb screws or getting no thumb screws and needing a tool to open it this one unfortunately actually had to go out and get a screwdriver because the thumb screw was so tightly pushed in because i want to say the factory had the, the side panel was a little warped but not noticeably so uh the power uh supply is top mounted so that might be an issue for some folks uh, i prefer bottom mounted and sheathed but then again this thing doesn't have a glass panel so sheathing really doesn't matter uh, what you're going to see right here is the backing where you would hopefully have a little bit of space for wire management and cable management. Here's the issue. There is none. There is maybe, maybe a little over an eighth of an inch of clearance, even with that slightly uh, beveled side panel that's there. So here's a little still of it. It's very, very small. Um, most of your wiring and cabling will be inside of the case itself, which with any running fans or moving parts within the case, so a, a, maybe a graphics card with a, with a couple of dual fans on there, you got to keep that in mind, which again is just an airflow issue. So right off the bat, that's kind of a big mark against this for any gaming capability because the moment you start bringing in a discrete graphics card, you want extra airflow. And already this thing's kind of lacking in the airflow anyway, and now the airflow you have in there is going to be obstructed by cabling. So you got to keep that in mind. Uh, overall, the sit the the case is good quality. There's nothing nothing looked looked or felt really weird um, or loose or even really that all that cheap. Uh, the only real cheap thing is the expansion slots in the back that I really didn't like too much the way it was done. I understand why they did it the way they did, but it, because it's so inexpensive. But overall, I think that's just the, I'll talk about later on. But the expansion slots, things like graphics cards, wireless cards, that kind of stuff, and maybe an external sound card. All those slots, they're little, like these little pry apart, like you break off the piece of the case and then put your stuff in there. Very strange, to, in my opinion, as opposed to just unscrewing the things and putting them back as you may or may not need them later on. So once you pop them open and use them, you can't ever go back and put them back in the case. So in my case, I went and went away from wireless on my main desktop. Um, as a result, later on, I decided that, hey, I'll go ahead and put this card back in because I don't need the wireless anymore and I was able to put back the old expansion slot covers you can't do that with the system you'll see that just a little bit later on there is a um, some airflow space in the bottom of this case even though it's not where the eight where the power supply is that is for things like graphics cards and there's a nice little mesh over it the front there is no mesh there is only the 
front plastic, which does not offer much airflow. You can put in a 140 millimeter fan in the front. That's optional. Or if you have an adjusting bracket, I suppose you get 120 in there. There's an 80 millimeter re a rear fan pre-installed that uses the four fin connector instead of a Molex. That's kind of nice. So it does have some level of control if your uh, motherboard has that capability. Another nice little function, whether they intended this to be benefit to the user or not, I don't know. The um, the front panel, everything's on the front panel. I have a system now where part of the wiring that's integrated into the case is on the top panel, and there's also part that's on the front panel. So you can't get everything apart, and things stay connected funny. And this just makes it so you can pull the whole thing apart and just skeletonize the whole system, which is kind of interesting because if you like modding modding cases, it might be helpful for you if you want to like put different case covers on there and just mess around and screw up the twenty dollar case. You got the option because you have a little more versatility. There's expansion slot. There's I'm sorry, expansion slot. Excuse me. There is a space for an optical drive, or if you don't want to use optical drives, you can make a separate hard drive bay, all that kind of stuff. You have some options there. There's space for two internal hard drives, and you're about to see how those work. Although they are not conventional in my view, it's a swing out door system. So basically, right here, here where you see me unscrewing this, this is a little almost like a door. It swings in and out. I've never seen it on a on a case before. But that being said, I usually do mid and full size towers, so I never would see them because there's usually always extra drive base to, for in those cases. Here, because space is it's just a premium, they're just trying to hide places to put stuff. In this case, for the hard drives, it'll accommodate your it'll accommodate a um, a standard uh, HDD mechanical drive or an SD drive with a um, if you have an adapter for it. So if you have if there isn't actually something in there for your SSDs, if you have SSD sized or if you're or maybe you like cannibalize an old laptop and you have an old laptop drive. But that's essentially how it works. You basically screw the drive into the door, the door opens and shuts. But each drive you put in there will, again, mess with your airflow. So you're talking about more airflow issues. And also because there, the um, system has a top-mounted power supply unit, the motherboard sits down low, which means if you have a graphics card, and the graphics cards are pretty generous for our size, it will fit up to an 11.81 inch long graphics card, which means it's going to cover most of your higher end gaming cards. But the problem is you still have the airflow issue. You There's just not much there. And it sits in the, in the actual, even on a micro ATX form factor, it's going to sit very low, very close to the bottom of that case. So you're not really pulling a whole lot of outside air in efficiently. So that's going to mean one of two things. Either you're going to be running a hot system, which isn't necessarily good for the components, or you're going to be doing something where you got to move the case around to give it a good flow. Um, from my perspective, this is a cool case. The biggest issue you're going to have with it is simply the fact there's not a lot of airflow with it. So if you're looking to make a budget gaming PC, I wouldn't use this case. I would find something else, save up an extra 50 bucks to get a decent gaming PC set up. For the case, don't skimp there because it's such an easy thing to upgrade later on, and there, it's just a pain. But... What I would recommend it for would be things like a school computer system or a home workstation, or you got someone in your family says, I need a computer, mine crashed, I only got 300 bucks. Well, you can hop, pop in one of the new Ryzen APUs or an Intel APU, don't use a discrete graphics card, and hook them up pretty easily, and it's going to be a nice, long lasting system. Gaming wise, yes, it'll work, but from my perspective, unless you're making a super budget gaming system with like a 2 gig graphics card for under 100 bucks, it's not really worth your time. It's not, it's not going to be worth the upgrade cost. You're, if you're just getting into the system building thing where you're like, I want to try something and not really break the bank, yeah, go for it. If you want to convert something and maybe you want to take an old PC and stick it into a new tower that looks a little better, I guess that would work. It's a pretty no-frills tower. But overall, it's a good product. It's just made for a very niche market. You're looking for people who want to build their own standard kind of boring computer that's not going to have heat issues so you're talking making like maybe like a home workstation or a computer for somebody that just need one that needs one instead of paying five six hundred dollars for a computer with a bunch of gunked up software they don't need so really it's not it's not a bad product it really is okay it's just is it what anybody really needs yes but the people that would need it or get the most use out of it 
aren't going to be your typical computer builders. So this would be like, hey, my this would be definitely somebody out there who's making computers and does it as a hobby and says, well, my 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 grandma needs a computer or my mother needs a computer, and their budget's three hundred bucks. Boom, this is their case. This is what you do. This is how you get it set up and you get you can get it taken care of for three hundred bucks with with a, with a decent APU, and they'll make your mama happy and that's how you can handle that. Or if you're doing something for work. Or like a, this would be almost perfect for like a private school setting where you're not dealing with government contracts and public schools, and you got a way to basically build ten of these in a row. Yeah, you can have a little computer station in a private school or in a, or in a private situation or a home business that's expanding. But as far as using this for any gaming capability, just don't think about that. Or or any high end video capability, you're not gonna make a big home the home theater PC out of this thing. This is a very basic computer case meant for very basic functions. So great product, basic function functionality to it. Um, biggest issue I see is airflow. So anything that makes a lot of heat, video processing, gaming, just move on to something else, maybe a little bigger, maybe, maybe a micro ATX form factor case that has a little more airflow to it. You're going to want to see a lot more fans just because otherwise it's just not going to be a good situation. So that's it, guys. The Rose Will 3. Oh, good. I can't remember what the daggone number code is. The Rose Will SRM-01 Micro ATX Mini ITX Budget Case. So thanks again for watching. Have a great day.